I'm sorry, Mr. Simpkins. The answer is no. No, 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 no. Six down, four to go. Right, I've got Inspector. no time to what argue. I tell you, it's got to be done tonight. Number of it must be a yes or no question, Inspector. Do you understand? Tonight! But they ain't big enough. You couldn't get half a dozen coats out of the old caboodle. Coats? Dogskin coats? Then we'll settle for half a dozen. We can't wait. <laughs> the police are everywhere. I want the job done tonight. Are we going to do it? Any way you like, poison them, drown them, bash them in the head. You got any chloroform? Not a drop. And no ether. Either. Either. I don't care how you kill the little beast, but do it! And do it now! Oh, please, miss, now have pity, will you? Can't we see the rest of the show first? This is the emergency podcast system. This is not a test. Movies are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may already be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Do not panic. Specialists have been dispatched. They will help you identify these pretenders and defend you against this invasion of the remake. Please stand by for further instructions. Welcome to the Invasion of the Remake podcast. I am your host, Jason Bishop, and with me today is Trish Cochlin. Hey, everybody. And a very upset Stam Stepanenko. <laughs> I'm not that upset. Right? <laughs> fur is bad. Yes. Even animated fur? Even animated fur. Okay. Well, I thought fur you were is more... good on the like, actual animal it's intended for. Yeah, Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> I, fur has its use. But I it's figured really it was mainly to... for me making you watch a Disney cartoon. You know, I like Disney cartoons. Yeah, they're generally good. Yeah. In in this instance, a thousand times better than the remake. <laughs> this is probably one of the more traumatizing Disney films, I think. Yeah, you know what? I Watching it, I'm like, holy shit, this thing's dark. Were all Disney movies this dark? Yes, they were. <laughs> they are yeah. just... It's really dark. Like, you think about it on paper. This horrible woman wants to take puppies and make a coat out of them and doesn't care how you slaughter them. I'm like, oh my god, she's a sociopath yeah. and psychopath and... And a uh, serial killer in the making. Yes. Well, I mean, think of all the other ones, like Snow White. Take a 14-year-old, 13-year-old girl and, like, cut out her heart. Right. They're, they're Bambi. Bambi. Yeah. Mom dies. Lion King. But that was, like, at the hands of another animal. That's really a rare. <laughs> yeah. Even Sleeping Beauty. Um, Cinderella. I mean, she's abused by her stepmother. Yeah. Sle- well, Sleeping Beauty yeah. was the film before 101 Dalmatians yeah. in 1959. It was actually a bit of a flop. Mm-hmm. And Disney was thinking about closing down the animation arm of the studio because they were refocusing on their live action family films that were doing well at the time, Herbie and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, this was kind of a, a test at this point. They weren't sure if they wanted to keep making cartoons. Thank God. Because yeah. uh, 101 Dalmatians comes along in 1961 with a budget of $4 million. And I don't know if this is up to date with the re-releases and DVD and whatnot. Oh, but sure, it's right. a worldwide gross of $224 million. Needless to say, the animation arm kept going for quite a while. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, the traditional animated arm is pretty much toast and relegated to te- television and shorts and direct yeah. video stuff and sometimes uh, yeah. it bothers me a lot because i'm a big fan of traditional animation there's something nice about it i don't know it's just... yeah they did cut some corners on this to cut down their budget for for what they were doing in their prior film of sleeping beauty they went to this xerox format for their backgrounds Okay. rather than a lot of paintings so they do one and then just xerox them in for the other scenes and that is what came up with this scratchy look, which I kind of dig. I, yeah. I was, I, I was, I was going to mention that because I really yeah. liked that. And that would be the format for the next 20 years. Mm-hmm. Walt hated it. <laughs> 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 he was angry about a lot of things. <laughs> I kind of the impression yeah. that Walt was kind of an angry man. Yeah. He didn't have too much hands-on with this particular project because he was really confident about this script. He was not so confident about some of the design work that went into it. And I think it's some of the stronger ones. 
I, it yeah. stands up. Like I watch mm-hmm. it and I'm going, wow. I mean, this this is aged really, really well. Stylistically, yeah. I really love the direction they took. Yeah, Chuck Jones uh, once said about 101 Dalmatians that he could have never made that film with the studio he was at at the time because spots cost money <laughs> and only mm-hmm. Disney could have made it at that time. <laughs> oh, you're so right. So right. Yeah. yeah. When you think about it, yeah, that's to animate that on so many different animals and so many dogs. And keep them unique, and keep too, them right? Unique. Well, and have that design. You have to know which puppy you're painting. Yeah. Well, lucky, yeah. If you paid close attention, his spots were in a horseshoe design, which is thus the name Lucky, uh, outside of also being the run to the litter that almost That's died. Alive. Yeah. To keep that uniform without those throughout those characters i mean there's only six puppies that really get identified in either film and really i don't know in the remake there's one (laughs) that really plays it's kind of yeah well that's the whole thing but i mean when you think about it oh two there's two there's two well from a like a a narration point i mean you could do it maybe in a long-standing series like the wire you could have (laughs) all the dalmatians have their moments yeah because you could have that many characters well there was a uh animated series in the 90s which was quite wonderful i wish disney Mm -hmm. would release a lot of their 90s tv stuff because on dvd or blu-ray or whatever because a lot of it was amazing and None yeah. of it you can see right now, except uh, for probably that. on their channels. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're probably saving it. that because they're doing their own streaming service. Yep. So I get to start watching all the shit they have on Netflix right now because it's going yeah. away, folks. We have Moana here in Canada. Moana. <laughs> I don't know about the other Netflix territories, but we've got it right now. Nice. Go, yeah. go watch it if you haven't seen it. It's yeah. really good. And but. I think Canadian Flix will probably have it a little bit, a little bit longer because, because I, mm. I expect that Disney will, service will start off in the U.S. They'll see how it does before they expand to other countries, just like Netflix did, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's what's going to happen. And we're going to see more and more of that. Like Netflix has been really concentrating on their original programming as well. And mm-hmm. Paramount is releasing their streaming thing surrounding their new Star Trek show. And we'll probably be reaching that out as well. And believe it or not, DC Comics has got their own streaming service coming. Oh, wow. You might as well have cable at this point. It, yeah, you start adding it yeah. all up. And I'm like, oh, man, the DC one's kind of cool. And then I thought about it. I'm like, oh, I think I own most of it. So it's a fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, unless there's more new stuff coming out. Yeah, but I mean, I had to think about it. I'm like, is there enough stuff? And then I started tolling up. I'm like, yeah, I guess there kind of is. You know, there's multiple Superman uh, yep. TV series and caboodles of cartoons. Yeah, lots of them, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I say caboodles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, caboodles sounds right. I don't know. If you're gonna, if you, I thought that was the Latin plural of cartoons. A caboodle of cartoons. It seemed appropriate. You know, a murder of crows, a caboodle of cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We like it. And Trish has coined a term. Actually, Jay's coined a term this time. Yes. <laughs> and, but Trish has defined it. Yes. <laughs> There Thank we go. you for having my back. <laughs> I'm here for you, man. <laughs> Coming soon to a t-shirt near you, Caboodles. <laughs> Along with all the other t-shirts that we want to make. But yeah, somebody's going to have yet. to remind me of, of all the t-shirts we've come up with <laughs> that we haven't made. Yeah. <laughs> so this is based on a novel by Dodie Smith, who really loved the film and thinks Disney improved it, so... Good on Disney on this one for not pissing off the author. Yes, (laughs) because Disney's been known to do that. (laughs) That's right. Oh, yeah. Uh, The story was by Bill Pete, who had also worked on Cinderella, Dumbo, and Sleeping Beauty. So he obviously made up for the Sleeping Beauty disaster, which is a good, I think, is... Mm -hmm. It may not have done well in 1959, but is now considered quite a classic. So, it, you know, sometimes time is all it needs, right? Because I think I've always thought of Sleeping Beauty as one of their classics. Oh, for sure, yeah. So it was. I was surprised to read that when researching this film that it was a, a bomb. Well, when they're talking about like villains, uh, one of the major villains I always think about is Maleficent because mm-hmm. I just she's so compelling. Like I love her. I love that movie because of the villain. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the only reason. The rest of it kind of unnerves me, but I love the villain. <laughs> yes. And if our audience is wondering, I'm like, are we going to do that? Maybe down the road. This I was thinking about this. We haven't done a cartoon to live action uh, mm-hmm. thing since How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which was a fun episode. Go oh, check sure. that out. And Disney's now in this big trend of doing that. And I've had a few people go, well, why aren't you starting with Beauty and the Beast? I'm like, well, this was really the first one they did. So mm-hmm. let's start there. And Yeah, this was decades before. Yeah. 
And honestly, 101 Dalmatians just has less music. <laughs> I have to sit through. <laughs> I was I like musicals, but for some reason I never liked it in my cartoons. Huh. But yeah. you know what? I think about Beauty and the Beast and, and Little Mermaid and stuff. I love those movies. But yeah. out of the stuff out of that 90s run, Aladdin's probably my favorite. Yeah, like and I there's mean... There's still quite a bit of music in Aladdin. There's only there... two pieces in 101 Dalmatians. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I was surprised. Me and too. he's a musician. This is the odd I, part right? of all the cartoons. <laughs> and they had to force that one into the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I couldn't wrap my head around. He's literally a musician, but every other movie, they work in like mills and other stuff, and they're just singing all the time. <laughs> all right, it's, it's true. So yeah. So when you're a musician, you're not happy enough to be singing. Apparently, <laughs> I guess unless you really hate someone, <laughs> then you can come up with a hit. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah, her her song wrote itself. It yeah. does. It does. And it's an interesting counterpoint in the remake of this. 101 Dalmatians from 1961 was directed by three directors because it is animation, so Mm -hmm. a lot more hands need to be involved. Clyde Geronimi, he worked on Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Sleeping Beauty. Hamilton Lusk, who worked on Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Pinocchio. And Wolfgang Reitherman, who worked on Robin Hood, The Aristocats, and Jungle Book. Jungle Book being oh, one of my absolute I really love, favorites. I love Robin Hood, too. Yeah, yeah. Robin Hood's really good. I, he's His might be one of my favorites lists. I saw Aristocrats is on Netflix right now, too, and I haven't seen that in a gazillion years. So oh, It's fun. It's one of the lesser-known Disney ones. So. It is. It's right there with the rescuers. It's just one of those ones yeah. that's just never, when it was never shown on The Wonderful World of Disney, mm-hmm. you, like you never mm-hmm. got to see it. Right? Yeah. A lot of these, that was where I saw a lot of these older ones was on Wonderful World of Disney. You've got, but once a year, you get lucky and find they play one of the one of their classics. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think one of my absolute, it might even be my absolute favorite of uh, my childhood. I don't consider the '90s ones in that because I was yeah, in my teens older. at that point. <laughs> as much as I adore them, but as in my childhood, Great Mouse Detective. Oh yeah, because I liked anything Sherlock. Yeah. That's really good. And I don't think there were a lot of tunes in there. It's Vincent Price is the villain. Like, yeah. it is awesome. See, that should, that should be our remake, just leaning a modern Sherlock, but <laughs> animated. <laughs> yeah, well, they're out there. <laughs> they're definitely out there. And we're going to talk also about the remake from 1996, the live action remake by Stephen Herrick, uh, who also directed Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Three Musketeers from 1993. His just resume just keeps getting better and better. And Mr. Holland's Opus from 1995. Uh, and then it goes downhill from Yeah. There. The movie was budgeted at $75 million. It had an opening weekend of 45 and change million dollars and grossed... In just in the U.S. alone, uh, 300... Oh, this is probably worldwide gross, actually, yeah. now that I'm looking at the number, but $304.2 million. So didn't do too badly, despite <sighs> mixed feelings. And maybe this is somewhat of, of a revelation uh, as to why it is the way it is. The screenplay was written by John Hughes. Yes, that John Hughes. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, if you're still struggling, then if you oh. are, please just... Leave now. Turn off the show. You don't belong. <laughs> Breakfast Club. Oh, Breakfast Club. Club 16 candles. But uh, Weird Science, which we covered in episode mm-hmm. 83. Go check that one out. But what probably makes most sense to this film, Home Alone's 1, 2, and 3. He also wrote those. So I'll just let that sink in because we'll get there. <laughs> uh, I'll go back to the original here because I didn't get into the cast. It's all voice work, but voices... Mm-hmm. There's great voice actors and they need to be acknowledged. In the 1961, it starred Rod Taylor, Betty Lou Gerson. Interesting enough, Betty Lou Gerson was the nurse from The Fly. Oh, nice. So go check out uh, episode 101 because we talk about it. Sweet. J. Pat O'Malley, Martha Wentworth, Ben Wright. Kate Bauer and David Frankham and a whole slew of other voice actors that probably nobody knows that except for me in the room that thinks it's awesome. Oh. <laughs> well, most of these guys had, had regular acting gigs too. Mm-hmm. And we move into the 1996 version and that starred Glenn Close as Corella DeVille, Jeff Daniels as Roger, Jolie Richardson, who was Anita, Joan Plowright, who's awesome, by mm-hmm. the way. 
uh, as the nanny, Hugh Laurie as Jasper. Yes, House himself was yeah. was Jasper. It was really cool. I'd forgotten he was in that movie. <laughs> And it was really cool to see. Uh, Mark Williams, who was Horace, and everybody in our audience yeah. probably better knows him as Mr. Weasley from the Harry Potter franchise. Yes. John Shrapnel was Skinner. He was in Gladiator and Troy. And Tim McKinnery was Alonzo, who actually was in Black Adder with Hugh Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, wait, yes, now I place him. Hugh Fraser was Frederick. Fred Walker... I just want to mention, did some various voice work, who's also the voice of Megatron. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <sighs> I did good on that one. <laughs> good. Real good. Not too much stumbling. <laughs> well, I get excited when I talk about cartoons. Oh, yeah. Apparently, yes. Oh, I knew this already. Why am I talking about apparently? <laughs> I knew this. <laughs> yes, the largest section of my DVD and Blu-ray collection is actually animated, so... <laughs> You gotta love a cartoon. I don't know. I do. It just takes me back to my childhood. I actually watch these movies in reverse. As I usually like to start with the original and then end with the remake. I did it the other way around because I wanted to watch 101 Dalmatians on Saturday morning with my breakfast. Oh, perfect. Right? What, <laughs> yeah. what, what were you eating, though? Oh, I had a good, uh, what I would ha- would have had with my family when I was a kid. So, you know, hash browns and eggs and toast and... <sighs> Yeah. See, I would have gone with a sugary cereal just because I just didn't have any. Uh, <laughs> Ironically, Sam and I had a whole sugary uh, cereal <laughs> conversation yesterday. Yes, we did. Yeah. You should have bought like the little thing you get with the many bit different tiny I, boxes. I feel like I, <laughs> I think I actually have one, but it's the one nobody eats and it's all bran. Oh, God, yeah. That one. <laughs> and it's so in. old. You, it's like eating cardboard anyhow. So yeah, I probably should just leave it <laughs> as a memento of the past. <laughs> okay. If it, See, was brand, if it was raisin bran. I would have taken it because I do like well that's bread. what I would do because I'm like oh it's left in that multi-pack is the fucking all brand damn it so I'd go grab a little pack because mom would always grab uh, the, a multi-pack the of the little sun-made raisins so I would dump that in there and doctor it <laughs> yeah that yeah you can't just have just the turn brand. it into raisin bran yeah. yeah which I can stomach I, I like raisin bran or I did as a kid anyway oh me too because <laughs> there were sweet things in it yes yeah <laughs> Raisins. That's right. Well, I'm going to run the trailer for the original movie and we'll come back and get into some dog stuff. 101 Dalmatians is here. The puppies are here. Puppies everywhere. I know. <laughs> it's the classic story of a romance. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that led to a marriage. That led to 15 puppies. Why, you old rascal. That became a happy family. Lucky, lucky, get down. We can't see. I'm hungry, mother. But someone evil wants those puppies. Anita, darling. Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. The world was such a wholesome place until... Cruella, Cruella de Vil. She's gonna make coats out of us. I worship hers. Oh, the puppies, they're gone. Now, the dog napping of the century. A sound alert. <laughs> has become an all-out Disney rescue mission. Up the double nap. <laughs> One hundred and one Dalmatians. We gave them a slip. Didn't we, Dan? Critics and audiences have made it one of Disney's all-time greatest classics. The little darling. Siskel and Ebert gave it two thumbs up. And Good Morning America called it wonderful. On a scale of ten, this film gets a hundred and one. A hundred and one. All right, that was the, I don't know, I guess, that, I think that was an 80s or 90s trailer for 101 Dalmatians. I did watch the original 1961, but it didn't lend itself too well to audio, so. Yeah. So I went with a later one, which is fine. Disney re-releases things all the time. Their trailers improve, so. Yeah, well, you have all those ads for the kids, like, going, a wonderful adventure. Like, you have that same voice. You know that guy's voice. He's the Disney yeah. guy. Yeah, he's definitely the Disney guy. He was for decades yeah he might mm-hmm. still be as far as i know i don't I have no idea uh, yeah i haven't i haven't caught any disney trailers for a while no videos or dvds 
can't say that I have either, seeing as I very rarely actually actively <laughs> seek them out. And I mean, it's, it's just, I. it's not that I don't like Disney movies or cartoons. It just, they there's so much else out there for me to be watching. It just doesn't occur to me to go back and watch an older Disney film. or mm-hmm. And, and the, I love the 3D animation stuff, but I just don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy the, the original two-dimensional animation. Mm-hmm. I just like mm-hmm. seeing the the art form yes. of it all. I think is more the case. Even things that look traditional, traditionally animated, are still computer generated. They're usually just done as flash. Yes. And I don't know. It's uh, it does bug me that that art form's gone now. And the last time we really got to see it in play was Princess and the Frog, and, and Disney was the best at it. Yeah, and I I don't yeah. know. Don Bluth style... isn't doing it anymore. Nobody's no. doing it. That's just sad. It is the dying art form. But uh, the open, I, I like the opening of 101 Dalmatians, like that style of animating, like with the many things happening on the screen, mm-hmm. kind of like Pink Panther, like this, and how they, with each of the credits, it was, the background was sort of reflective of what was happening there, like mm. color design, they colored it in. Yeah, yeah and, it's a bit of Art Nouveau in that intro. Yeah. I loved it. I really dug that as well. I found it really interesting because watching it in reverse, they do fill in a lot of gaps and try to make more sense of Corella DeVille's and Anita's relationship. Mm-hmm. When she shows up, she's already showing up ready for the puppies. We never see her before her charging in to see the puppies. And it's just mentioned offhandedly that her and Anita were old schoolmates. Mm-hmm. What the hell happened? She looks like a thousand years older than Anita if they were schoolmates. Yes. <laughs> no. Like, if they were schoolmates, either, yeah, something bad has happened, or Cruella DeVille is not, I don't know, mentally capable of going to school. <laughs> like, was held back 45 times. She, or... was, she was the one cleaning the toilets? I, yeah, like, I, don't, know. I don't know. Or, like, the only other way Just... I could do it is if Cruella was teaching at the school it doesn't sound like she'd have the patience to be a teacher so yeah well i don't know but from what i've heard from teachers they could go this insane after so many years of teaching yeah i would love to know what her backstory was where she just her fur obsession maybe she just yeah we never find out how she got all her money either so no she's she's wealthy for sure i mean they they make that very clear they definitely make more sense of that in the in the live action one yeah like they're really why they would even interact is a mystery in the first film in the second film at least they've made a yeah why they would even interact yeah it looks to me that she's a fashion designer runs a company of fashion designers Mm -hmm. and has a big successful label yeah and it makes more sense why anita would know her is if she works for her yeah plus it also explains her fascination with fur yeah and if you've ever seen any interviews with some famous fashion guys they and and gals they are very interesting people (laughs) (laughs) they tend to be very flamboyant yes and unique individuals She's she's the anime version of the Devil Wears Prada, essentially. It's funny. I was watching. I was thinking exactly that actually. Um, when I was watching, the, when actually I was watching the remake, I'm like, this reminds me of Devil Wears Prada in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, it's Glenn Close. Yeah. So like Glenn Close, Meryl Streep. We're talking the same area of, of standards of yeah. acting. Yeah. I gotta say, Glenn Close brought it. Like, oh, she totally she, did. She was awesome. She's she's my favorite part of that movie. Like out of everything, like I I greatly disliked the remake I, but Glenn Close was in it I could tolerate it I actually quite like the casting as a whole in that oh yeah the casting was excellent I, I yeah. mean I, I felt that they were very true to the original with their choice of, of, of actors for their, their their human characters for sure mm-hmm. um, but yeah. I think that part of it is, is now the, the human characters drive a lot of the story versus in the original the, the story was told by Pongo right yeah. so and that's one of the things I did enjoy about the remake is the fact that it was not there was no talking animals. Yeah. Right. See, and I like the have talking tons animals. Of personality. Though. Yes. Yeah. See, and I give me a talking animal rather than these garbage humans running a story <laughs> with animals. I don't know. I don't think the the focus is goes away from the animals too much. And like I said, I think the the animals have a lot of personality. And this is you know ninety six. Is none of this is CG'd. There's a few camera trickery things, but it's none of it's CG, and I think that's amazing in and of itself. That's another thing Disney was very good at through 
out the probably 60s up until till that point in time was really good about creating stories with actual animals and making you making it believable and i thought that was pretty cool although the interesting to change changing the the cat to a dog i think it's just because dogs take instructions more than cats cats don't want to perform they're just gonna sit around and depends on the cat the cat can do it (laughs) there's just limitations on what a cat's gonna do for well there's obviously limitations for dogs too because in the live action they cast well they had 230 puppies to make up the 99 because I guess they just have shorter days than humans. Well, well and <laughs> no, no, because if you have a certain period of time, yeah. they're not going to look like the same puppy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with the adult uh, Dalmatians, just, I mean, there's only two in the film, but it, there were 20 to make up those two um, but you, for all those scenes. Yeah, well, because, I mean, you're talking individual tricks that have to be done. Yeah, because yeah. they're adult, cause they're they're very specialized. Yeah. They are very specialized when it comes to trained animals. Yeah. And, yeah, that's a lot of dogs to be trained, especially with puppies, because they don't come trained. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're just hoping they're not going to be peeing all over the place. But no. that was a good gag. <laughs> yeah, that was a good gag. But, you know, it, I mean, the thing is, the puppies just had to run. They just had to sort of make sure they ran in the right direction, for the most part. The, and that all the uh, all the puppies that did had sort of, like, individual tricks they were older puppies yeah right? that had that, that were obviously at the point where they could be trained to do very specific things yeah right? yeah yeah you're not gonna have much happening when they don't even have their spots they're gonna be just a, a week old at the top yeah. so yeah i don't know i just yeah i absolutely hated this remake <laughs> absolutely i know why the dog was made the cat was like the cat was made into a dog. The cat had read the script and decided it wasn't good enough to be in. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming the Home Alone thing set off a few ah oh, moments. You know what? Here's the thing. I absolutely hated the movie up until the Home Alone moments. Really? I did not like any... But in it, I didn't that like that stuff was an, was really annoying me after a while. I, um, but I, just, I didn't like the humans at all. They were definitely... You weren't supposed mer- to. They were merging. Yeah, you weren't supposed to. Yeah, but I don't want to even hear them talk. I don't want to look at them. <laughs> I, well, I mean, as far as the humans casted go, I'm like, that's fantastic. See, I thought the casting was great. And then I, I was... Uh, I have a quibble about the casting. I thought, I th- he, honestly, the addition of, what's his name? John Shrapnel as Skinner kind of bugged me because that's bringing in even more darkness to this. And he didn't really wind up accomplishing a lot. Uh, no, he, being in he the was film. a total throwaway character. And there's no version of that character in the original film. It's all down to the original two, yeah. which was uh, Hugh Laurie's uh, character of Jasper and, of course, Mark Williams Horace. See, and that's the weird thing. While watching this one, when I, was, I watched them in order... And I looked at the original Roger, and I'm like, you know who'd be great for this role? Hugh Laurie. And then I got to the remake, and it's Jeff Daniels, but Hugh Laurie's the bad guy. And I'm like, fuck this thing. <laughs> I'm so fucking mad right now. Because even as a bad guy, I like Hugh Laurie better than Jeff Daniels. Well, Like, just the know, way the characters were written, like, they I were garbage. I think because they were going with that Home Alone thing, and... Jeff Daniels could do the Pratt Falls at the beginning, but in the end, the humans don't do a lot. At least the owners, the dog owners, don't do a lot in the story. So, if you're going to have somebody who's really capable of doing comedy and delivering good lines and being a somewhat likable bad guy, I mean, yeah, Hugh Laurie's got all of why, that. Yeah, that's probably why. So, he's... I mean, even though Jeff Daniels might get top billing, I think Hugh Laurie might be the actual star of the film, just under Glenn Close. Yeah, and I just I, I generally liked him better than Roger. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you, I really there, there are certain points where you felt sorry for. I liked everybody in that movie for as far the, as... the for Jasper and, and and his partner whose name I keep forgetting, but Horace Horace, sorry, but yeah, he's because of all the bad things that happened to them. But they're reprehensible human beings. You're not supposed yeah. to like them, right? Yeah, in fact, they're somewhat lo- more. At least Horace is more likable in the remake. He's a little more devious in the in the cartoon. Although I love that the fact that they keep playing him off as a dumb one, and he's always the one with the right idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. like where did these puppies go when when they're they've escaping? Disguised themselves. They've disguised themselves. I'm like maybe they're using the ice to uh, cover their tracks because they won't leave prints. Mm-hmm. He's always right. He's always <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> and Jasper's the one. They're dogs, you idiot. Of course they didn't do that. They, they yep. can't think like that. <laughs> exactly. I, and I do love when Cruella figures out that they have disguised themselves. She's like, impossible. Like, 
there's no way. <laughs> yep, they're that smart. Yeah, but I do like the the one thing I did like in the the remake was the misdirect with the rabbits, where they follow rabbit tracks, thinking they're following puppy tracks. Yeah. Right. I thought that was a really good. Yeah, there's something I find really charming about the whole concept of the Twilight Bark that sets that all off. Yes. Yeah. Because you know you think when watching this and Cruella is going in to steal those puppies. And you're thinking, okay, Pongo and Perdita are going to be the big heroes of this movie, and they're going to go off and go on this great adventure and rescuing their children. But it's not them at all. It's they, the community. It's really the community of the animals. Mm-hmm. And that is also, I think, something that the remake sets up a little nicer. When they get to that wedding moment and you see all those dogs outside of the church along because it's, it's essentially a double wedding. The dogs are sitting outside and, and yeah. seeing their friends get married, as well as uh, Anita and Roger. And it's kind of charming. I kind of like it. And it does set up. It, and there, it's it's still that anthropomorphic thing that might come from a Disney thing. Yeah. Well, and they're, they're just not setting talking. it up even sooner, right? Because when Pongo and, and Roger are in the park, Pongo's talking to all the dogs that go past. Right, right, like, I, and I, I really enjoyed that. Actually, is the fact that yeah. there, was, there was already establishing the relationship that Pongo is well liked in the dog community. Yeah, they do that in the cartoon. They actually say, "Oh, you're the famous Pongo." Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're obviously very well liked. I, <laughs> the animated uh, Pongo, best wig man ever. By the way, oh, saying. I love Pongo, but I, you know what? Here's <laughs> here's the thing. What I liked about the original was they start off the voiceover, I'm living off Regent's Park with my pet. Pongo imagines Roger as his pet. Like, he's trying to do something for his pet Roger. Yes. <laughs> Which I kind of, I really do enjoy that idea, where the dogs have adopted these humans. It's not mm-hmm. the other way around. They're the ones in charge, and they're like, oh, well, we got to give our human, I got to give my pet somebody to be with. Yeah. It's pretty much established in both those films that Roger really can't get on without the dog. Yeah, <laughs> the I don't know. The dog kind of keeps him on time and and makes him breakfast. And <laughs> yeah, there's some charming stuff in in that, but it really is about you know the dog trying to better his the humans, and they do the best they can without actually giving the dog dialogue in the remake. But it's it's pretty cool to actually hear it in in the cartoon. Yeah, like I, I love, I love hearing it in the cartoon. I love anthropomorphized animals, but I just like, yeah, I would rather have a look who's talking now moment with those dogs because I just, I don't know when we're. I think I was misunderstood before where I, I know I hate the villains, but I hate the two protagonists. I do not like Anita, and I do not like Roger. Hmm. Roger is kind of a sexist idiot, and Anita's a dumbass who <laughs> just doesn't know any. But she's a sopping nothing who does who just. I can't. I just hated them both so much at the minute at the beginning. I was like, "Fuck this movie!" Twenty minutes in, <laughs> I just felt that they were both unique individuals lost in their own little clouds. That the dogs kind of have to force them into these situations, and both of them get to go diving into the drink, <laughs> the the pond. Yeah. See, and I, I, you know, I, I think it's I, handled better yeah, in the cartoon. I think it's handled better in the cartoon. The truth is, I didn't really care about them. I, could give, give, I gave two shits about them. I didn't hate them. I didn't you like did, them. They were, I was indifferent to them because yeah. they really don't add anything to the story ex- yeah. aside uh-huh. from... I didn't Pongo feel a connection to meeting. them in either one no. of them, to be honest. No, because no. they're not. They're, 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 they are a device. Yeah. They are not the primary characters and there's no need to like them per se. Yeah. And I think that that's why I just didn't, I I couldn't wait to get past them because they didn't drive the story forward for me once they got married. No, no. And that whole, let's get married thing. What the fuck? Oh yeah. I I had a, what, what the fuck moment there too. It's like really that quickly. Well, but I mean, there, there's a, we don't know what that passage of time actually is. Yeah, we do. We know that was that day. day. They, they were, were getting, getting married dried. No, but they were they, getting dried at his house, and he says, oh, will yeah. you marry and they, me? Yeah, they'd known each other for for mere hours, and they're already going to get married. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, I, <laughs> yeah. maybe they went to dive in the pond more at than which, once. Like, cause <laughs> at one point, Roger is sitting there complaining about the fact that she didn't let him give her mouth-to-mouth correctly, because <laughs> that's supposed to be a joke, somehow. Like, I, I just, it, and it irritated me. And then the beginning, she's talking to Glenn Close, like, would you ever leave me? Well, I don't know if we got married. My husband and I's plans had, our marriage to different plans. You're a fashion designer. You draw the drawings. You can do that from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're saying that if some guy came along, and she's more successful than Roger is. Well, I think she's at the end, ultimately more successful. She I think at still the end working. of the day, a lot of this is just simplified because keep in mind, this isn't for us; it's for kids. It is for kids, right? But what is so, it teaching kids? What about marriage? They, they, they don't give a shit about it either. <laughs> That's why they move past it. <laughs> no, they get right to it. I, that yeah, was like I, it I, just I, facilitate that, and move on because it isn't about them. Yeah. I think that I mean in the original they, um, Pongo sets it all up through dialogue and they mm-hmm. don't have that device in their in their remake yeah. so they they rushed it and it, and it didn't did. work for adults oh, but no. right but even though it takes actually longer but in you the don't remake. even have yeah. to here's the deal in the original they end both end up in the drink and then they're laughing ha 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 and then you go to a wedding so I in, I expected I put in in my head a passage of time yeah all so they had I. to do yeah. was have them put into the drink they're like oh it's like well, you know, you could stay here with my Dalmatian for a while. They don't have to have the will you marry me moment at all. That yeah, dialogue I agree. Could be fucking cut. Yeah. And yeah. that's what you need. But it wouldn't feel why? as weird and creepy as it did. It's yeah. garbage. Yeah. They should just have made it seem no, more No, yeah, sense. in my head, and maybe it's just because I did put that in my head that, that that happened. Like, there was a passage of time. I didn't actually, even, even now I'm thinking, like, no, no, there was a passage of time. It didn't happen overnight. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. And there was from, from their meeting to the wedding. But yeah. th- that moment where they decide they're going to get married is the same day they met. Yeah. Right. That, and that's, that's I, apparently Trisha and I both have a beef about that because yeah. it was, yeah. it was, yeah, really ham fit. Yeah, I guess, two I guess, dogs sniffing their butts have more of a courtship. <laughs> I, I guess Anita just really liked macking on him while getting mouth well, to, bad mouth to mouth. Here's, not even that too. Here's the other bit. bitching about it. I don't get it. Well, and the other bit about too, she's like, oh, what a nice human. This guy came up, tried to steal your dog, yelled at you. Uh, he, he, he's just dumb enough he can't tell Dalmatians apart. <laughs> yeah, but then he was like a fucking asshole to you, and your first thought is like, what a nice guy. Anita has problems. <laughs> to, uh, to be fair, she also carried literal bricks in her bag. <laughs> Which she needed for this asshole who's trying to take her fucking dog. Well, he, uh, he, he was distressed, and he did apologize. Not really. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He was ham fisted. I'm kind of sorry. Sorry. She must have watched a different movie than we did. I think so. Uh, yeah. no, I watched that movie. I just heard it the way he fucking said it. I think that's that's just Jeff Daniels, but yeah. in his delivery. But yeah. no, it, see, that's the other problem. I don't. I, I don't. I think he was actually apologetic. Yeah. He, I think he, he was, was miscast. Uh, I don't know. I think he's a fine Roger, but at the same time, he's not in it that much, so I don't worry about it that much. Now, uh, to your point of why can't she work from home, uh, I got an easy answer for that. It's Corella DeVille. She is a micromanager. Yep. Done. Because, <laughs> okay. of course, she is. Yeah. Well, my, Corella DeVille has already, already told her that other fashion designers would like to poach her. Don't work for Corella. Yep. Yeah. She um, is already going to be sought after. Yeah. Done. Like, she yeah. still has a job. Yeah. Well, if, if you don't dig your gig and you know other people are looking at you. Exactly. Yeah. She and can you probably still get more work. money too. He's still yeah. trying to get a good game off the ground. Oh, that was annoying. Uh, the, the, that kid needs a punch in the face. <laughs> wow, you had a lot of hate, Trish, today. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes. I'm <laughs> real angry yeah. for this movie. Yeah, no kidding. I despise it's a kid's this movie. movie. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Okay, yeah, a lot of hate for this movie. Here's the most hate I have. Corel DeVille had the wrong target. She should have tried to make a, made a coat of the people who wrote this fucking movie. <laughs> No, no. Again, John Hughes. Yeah, I know. But I forgive maybe, you. I, I know. This is the part I'm having trouble with. John Hughes, you you can do better. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> oh, no, he can't. Um. <laughs> no, no, not anymore. No. Um, he could have done better. He could have done better. Uh, I expected yeah. more. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, I mean, this movie was longer than it needed to be. There's a mm-hmm. lot. I mean, the whole scene with the kid playing turn the video game and the whole setup of the... the you, need a, you need a villain, a better villain. Yeah. A waste of time didn't need it right well, i mean i saw the ending coming at that moment i'm like oh he's gonna make a game with cruel as the villain yeah. right i mean it was, yeah. was yeah. Well, why couldn't he but still be a musician it's not the any different than coming up with his hit song with cruella as the the theme of the but song. it wasn't necessary either no they were just right. kind of modernizing it for what kids can relate to yeah. in the 90s i yeah. mean that's a lot of passage of time and kids were into video games yeah. and at the end of the day that actually was 
screenshots from a video game. Yes, the, the video See, game they did. That's release. the thing. It so seems like it a was very, marketing. Yeah, that was I, that was me to like. It seemed shoehorned in, yeah. and then I realized it was marketing once yeah. I saw the game. Yeah, and I'm like, ooh, because like I, I would, I think I might have enjoyed that. I might have enjoyed Roger a little bit better had he just been a composer or like did jingles for television mm. or commercials. This would have made sense. Maybe People I didn't have an, a, as big of a problem with it because. I know game designers, and mm. sometimes it's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, yeah. you're not a team of one, but you know the Minecraft guy was yeah. before selling mm-hmm. it off to Microsoft. So honestly, yeah. it it does happen. So yeah. well, I thought they did it mention it seem in that he that, couldn't work well with others. Yeah, yeah. so it it didn't uh, seem that out of place. For yeah, me. I mean, they were clearly trying to establish that he was a creative personality. Yeah, and he, he you're right, he was a, kind of a solitary and didn't know how to take care of himself. They're trying to establish what was told to you in the first movie. Yeah, I, I just found that that the the whole bit of dialogue about the bit of dialogue about the villain could have been left out. Oh yeah, just it didn't. It 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 really did feel shoehorned and it, a really really blatant foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, even I, I, even a five year old who's watching this movie would have gone, "Oh, they're going to make Krillo the, the villain, yeah. right?" right? That, and that's that's what bothered me yeah, more than anything else. If you remove that dialogue, it it, it would plays really be well. Better. Yeah. It would mm-hmm. play better at that ending where you're like, "Oh, there we go." Yeah. It really would have played better, I thought. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I I totally agree. I yeah. mean, it was a, very much a duh kind of thing, but. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't all it was super important. He get got his hit game by making Corella the yeah. villain, and he got his hit song by making a theme song about Corella. Yeah. So, you know, in the end, it accomplishes the same thing where he's get now has enough money to support a family of dogs, a ton of dogs, <laughs> a which, Dalmatian plantation, a Dalmatian yes. plantation. But I'm sitting there going like, okay, so like, are we spaying any of these dogs? Are we neutering? <laughs> no. Are they, they doing they what dogs usually there's... do, which is breed? with the other puppies. No, they make it clear that there's children and grandchildren and grand stepchildren. They, make, they, they, they say that at the end of the movie. Right? So they're allowing them to inbreed all they want. <laughs> yes, see, yeah, you know what? Because here's, in the animal kingdom, Lucky might have banged up one of his sisters. We're just going to put that out there. <laughs> if, if this is for kids and they want to be true to it, then that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, in general, is the, the well. The, hey, hold on. I'm assuming the 15 puppies that are related didn't do anything with each other because there were a whole lot of other puppies that got rescued that got brought into this extended family that aren't related. So let's well, let's just stick with that mentality <laughs> that there wasn't actually inbreeding happening. <laughs> um, I'm going to just allow myself that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will let you have that veil in yeah, front of you. And that's the one thing we do have to bear in mind while we're critiquing these is these are kids' movies, not movies for adults. Yes. So a lot of the flaws that we see with them are not going to be apparent to kids. Yeah. The one that I, the, the one about the video game, I do feel would have been apparent to just about anybody. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I don't think there oh. was a five-year-old that wouldn't have picked up on yeah. that. Yeah. But most most of the stuff that we're complaining about would have just been fun for kids. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, and that's, that's what the intent of the movie was. And that's the problem with adults of any sort reviewing a kid's movie is we see things through adult eyes. We don't – we have great difficulty bringing ourselves back to when we were kids and going, would I have liked this as a kid? And as a kid, yes, I would have. I would have enjoyed this movie thoroughly as a child. Right? Probably until I was about 9 or 10 years old, I would have really enjoyed this. See, I probably would have been that person to be like, get rid of the adults. When do we see the puppies? Like, that would be it. I would still be wanting to get past the adults. Well, and I, th- that, I, that I'll agree with you on. And that's because they, they did stretch out that first third of the movie. The first act was really could have been about 15 minutes shorter. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they really did stretch it out. Well, yeah, I think part of it is because when, especially in 96, if you had a movie under an hour and a half, which the original film's like 79 minutes. Mm-hmm. People see it as a bit of a problem, especially at that point, movies were a lot more expensive than 1961. Oh, yeah. So you want to give people their value. I think I agree that maybe you could shave about 10 minutes off because it was an hour 40. Just bring it straight down to 90 minutes. I think that would have been perfect. Yeah, oh. And it all kind of come off that front end. The rest of the movie was a lot of fun. I might have shaved a little bit of that Home Alone stuff. But again... By the time Home Alone came along, I was a little older, and the slapstick was getting tired to me. Yeah. At certain points, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, we've had, an, I've had enough of this. 
But again, I think kids would have liked it. Yeah. Maybe I enjoyed it more when I was younger as well. It's funny that, you know, as an adult, I'm viewing the remake a little harsher because I would have been an adult when I'd seen that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have no problem with the, the cartoon at all because I can totally dive into my kid mentality <laughs> when, yeah. I, when yeah. I'm watching it. I don't know. Uh, that's just yeah, maybe my well, even any of cartoons. But uh, yeah, I, it, it, for, as a kid, also that you, you might have been tired of like sort of the slapstick, but I think kids would have enjoyed seeing the these animals triumph over these adults yeah and that's sort of part of what that charm was supposed to be about is yeah. is these animals are winning and and which i dig i did like that it changes a lot differently especially in that climax with with jasper and horace at that point because there are things you can do in animation that you can't do with live animals and vice versa uh, in some respects, I think they did go further in the remake, which is a kind of a testament to mm-hmm. what they were doing because they were really getting a one up on both those guys. Oh, uh, well, through most I would have liked to have seen more climax. of that actually. Maybe not quite mm-hmm. so slapsticky, they were, but a lot more of them outwitting. Where, where yep. the, the cartoon's a lot more subtle, where they're trying to trick and hide the puppies from them. They're literally kind of running them through traps. Yeah. That yep. uh, they can't seem to figure out that that Jasper and Horace keep getting caught into, uh, usually of their own accord because they're just bumbling idiots. But mm-hmm. <laughs> it still looks like yeah. Horace and Jasper probably would die, like in the, the do Home Alone guys. Remember when they were talking about how their injuries mm. should probably kill them? Yes, these two should be dead. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Scree Junkies, if you want to revive that bit, I always loved it. So go go do yes, 101 please. Dalmatians and please, please, see. Please. Tell me what the actual body count would be. I I would like to see that. Yes. <laughs> Everybody hasn't seen those. Go to Scree Junkies and and watch their Home Alone thing. And uh, they did one on I think Die Hard as well. Yes. And it's they were so great. good. They were really great. I'm going to run the trailer for the remake, and we're going to get back to this. Boy, we're all over the place, but we will we'll be back with more. 101 Dalmatians. I pronounce that there be man and wife. Amen. Amen. They're here. The puppets are here. Walt Disney Pictures presents 101 Dalmatians. Your father, Pongo! They were totally irresistible. We must call this one lucky. Unbelievably precious. Dipstick. And had a style all their own. Wizard. Which is all Cruella de Vil ever wanted. I live for fun. I worship fun. Put them in a bag. I'll take them with me now. The puppies are not for sale. This Thanksgiving. Just wait. Oh, my goodness. It's all right, like this. The battle is on. Get those puppies! Walt Disney Pictures presents you. Oi! Get out of my truck! 101 ways to ring in the holidays. Glenn Close. Good evening, madam. <laughs> Extend leg. 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> hey, it was the same voice guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, well, they only would have been about 15, 16 years apart, so well, why not, right? Well, yeah. and given that first trailer probably, probably was a re release yeah. in the 90s yeah. with this film. So. Yeah, well, probably, yeah. 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 Well, you have this, these voice actors, and they, they go on for decades. Like, did you ever see like the four voices in a limo short? No, where it's no. all the guys in a world. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I have seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> They're all together. That's great. No, I haven't seen that one. But the in a world guy, there's another one you can find. And they're like, no, no in a world. No, no. <laughs> In a place, not a, no no place. In a time, not no in a time. <laughs> in a place, in a time. <laughs> the guy, the director, is just constantly arguing with them. It's great. <laughs> Go find it. It's really funny. Oh, I have to see that. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> we now know what we're doing after the podcast. We're For all sure. going to YouTube and trying to find these clips, including my audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But they probably have heard it already. Oh yeah, that doesn't mean they won't go back and we they won't it's go back again. It's one, yeah. Just favorite it and put it in your YouTube queue. In a world where laughter was king, 
Uh, no in a world, Jack. What do you mean, no in a world? It's not that kind of movie. Oh? Okay. In a land that... No in a land either. In a time... No, I don't think so. In a land before time. It's about a comedian, Jack. One man. No. When your life is no longer your own. What, what does that mean? When everything you know is wrong. That's wrong. In an outpost. No. On the edge of space. Just space. A girl. No. Two girls. No. Now. No. More than ever. Stop it. A renegade cop. I hate you. A robot renegade cop. You're fired. You're fired. No, you're actually fired. I'm fired. Get out of the booth, Jack. No. I like it in here. So much fun. But when you hear that voice, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, now I want ringtones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I might have to make one. That would be good for me. Oh, could you, if you could b- combine it with one, in a world. Trisha's got a phone call. In a world. <laughs> Trisha's got a phone call. <laughs> I do have the technology to make that for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to bring this up, even though I brought this up while that trailer was playing. Uh, Glenn Close based her performance on Joanna Lumley, who played Patsy on Absolutely Fabulous. And she based it on that particular role. Exactly. And it's super you can good. see it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If, if, you, if you watched Ab Fab, you would recognize certain aspects of Cruella's personality yeah. In, in it for sure. Yeah. Because, right? uh, I mean, I haven't seen Ab Fab in a long time, but I remember when it first started airing, when it was first available to Jay and I, we watched like every episode we could find. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they played it on CBC for a No, well, that's how time. we watched yeah. it. That's how we were watching it. We were roommates at the time, yeah. and we were like, oh, there's, they got like uh, an Ab Fab <laughs> marathon going on. <laughs> Let's watch so it. <laughs> it was funny because Jay and I'd be sitting in the in his room watching it on his little itty bitty TV because yep. Rob and my, Mike were like, oh. God, I can't believe you guys are watching this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. Like, can you imagine if you can you imagine like Cruella Deville and Safi going at it together? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> it would have been way too much fun. <laughs> well, I want to talk a little bit more about Cruella, but first I want to bring up Joan Plowright. Like, uh, somebody took that cartoon version and just turned her into a human being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. If you, I, the only thing I can think is like cloning a cartoon character is all you could do. She's just she she is a delight, an absolute delight. Yeah, you just want to hug her. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Cuddle her so much. Yeah, she's it looks like she smells like like fresh baked bread. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you th- when I think about the casting, there's a lot of it's dead on. I think Jeff Daniels is probably the weakest of the bunch, but everybody else kind of yeah. looks like their cartoon. Exactly. Yeah, Horace. Yeah. I'm like. Awesome! He looks like almost like exactly like the right. cartoon Horace, really right? Did. Except for the nose. I mean, the, the, because those over exaggerated cartoon noses are almost impossible to yeah, of course. cast. But but as far as like body type and the, and the lack of chin and like it, yeah. and you could tell the actor playing Horace was kind of pulling his chin back to try and emulate that look. And yeah. I, that, that's what I yeah. really enjoyed about him was he was trying so hard to be Horace. Yeah. Right? Yes. Right? And that's why he's probably still a working actor is because he puts that kind of love into even really crappy mm-hmm. roles like this. Yeah, and I mean, he knew he was doing a cartoon. Yeah. He's aware of it. You know, despite all the changes, they do go out of the way to give you some of the most iconic bits. You know, the uh, the big car of Cruella. Yeah, yeah. Although it has way more life in the yeah. animated one. It does. The hor- well, the horrible truck that Horace yeah. and Jasper drive. Yeah, that's there. Uh, I mean, Cruella's laugh, especially that iconic scene of her bending over and laughing. That was wonderful seeing that. Beautifully Uh done. Beautifully done. So there are some amazing nods to the cartoon and certain, even some certain dialogue is just pulled straight whole cloth, especially the kill the puppies line, which, you know, what a horrible human being every time I think about it. (laughs) I don't care what you do. Was it, was it bash them? Like bash them uh, got chloroform got chloroform <laughs> i don't care how you do it but it, thinking about that when she was talking about this was the dark okay this is dark trish coming out when i kept thinking about like bash them like you get blood on the pelt you're kind of gonna wreck your coat <laughs> <laughs> they can clean it <laughs> it's pretty terrible it is pretty terrible but <laughs> she really wanted that yeah. coat she, she really wanted that coat. she fell in love with that design right away you know, her when Anita makes that design and she sees it based on her dog, which does 
prompt her to come and visit and you're like oh you have puppies and just hating the human beings and like oh yeah. I, I i love it when she is there the moment the puppies are born wait they have no spots they're useless <laughs> yeah the r- rats she said they're little, little like rodents rats. yeah it's a hard movie to watch because it, it it i mean disney movies always have a have an undertone of darkness to them yeah to me yeah. for the most part this one went into dark dark places that i that i, I surprised me actually well you when you think of it with an adult eyes yeah. and, and stuff I'm like oh my god like this is what a horrible horrible human well, being there's a point where he's talking she's talking to skinner on the phone and he doesn't speak yeah but what he's doing is morse code on the speaking part of the phone with a scalpel, yeah, that was like this is chilling. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. actually quite disturbing. Like, like if you saw it like in a horror movie or an action movie, your skin would crawl. Yeah, right? well, our and it kind of did when I was watching it. Our, the, our watching first scene, exactly. yeah, he, we see his kind of workshop as he's already working uh-huh. on another pelt, and she sent a Siberian tiger from mm-hmm. him. It's like, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, I mean, they talk about that news report, and, and they talk about that was, like that was skinned, skinned, and, and left the skin body was left there, and I'm like, and right then, I'm like, wow. Oh, this is really dark. Yeah, yeah. They yeah they left its mutilated carcass. Yeah. This is the line in a children's movie. <laughs> Somebody says mutilated carcass. That just tells you something. At least they didn't show it. But yes, yeah. <laughs> mommy, what's a mutilated yeah. carcass? Yeah, and there's the one, and when Cruella is stabbing the the pitchfork into the pile of hay, oh. she's talking about how she she says it's okay. It'll just be some buttonholes, and I'm like, oh. That was. I'm like, they, they at least address the fact that she'd be like damaging the fur, but yeah. but oh, <laughs> I know. God, <laughs> and I mean, it, it, that's why you don't feel bad when she gets abused by these animals. No, and, mm-hmm. yeah, and the, you actually want to see more. Especially gets tarred and feathered. Yeah. molasses. And, oh, I love the escalation of that. Like that yeah. molasses. I'm like. And, you know molasses is thick, so can you yeah. imagine being covered in that, having it soaked through? Her? She's wearing heavy fur clothes, so yeah. she's probably wearing about 50 pounds worth of weight. Yeah, right. As she's walking around yeah. and then goes into, like, pig mud and carrying that. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't th- think of anything more fitting. Yeah. Well, I mean, aside from having her skin made into a coat, but... Yeah, but I, yeah. you know, and maybe the movie actually the remake does that a little bit better. Just you get to humiliate her over and over and over again. I I do like how yeah. that ends rather than her own henchman crashing into her car. Yeah, she just ends up in the ditch. Yeah, yeah, nothing really happens to her. No, no I, I I I love the 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 skunk bit too, which mm-hmm. it was set up beautifully. It was set up so far in advance you'll forget about it. Like I actually did forget about the skunk until they showed it on her lap in the the back of the paddy wagon. Ooh, yeah, I have a question for you. Okay, you know the end of Hot Fuzz with the goose <laughs> and how that comes back at yeah. the end? Do you think the skunk would like them in like, oh, that skunk egg is good? I don't uh, know. May- I don't know. Maybe. 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 I mean, the skunk was obviously following her around because it was it's in her car. own vehicle at one point. It was. And yeah, followed it, him into the paddy wagon. It's a, it's a cold <laughs> Well, no, she night. picked. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know. If- if, if, if she if followed her in, but it was it was her stole, right? Like it was her it was her like she was using it to warm her hands. It was sitting oh. on her passenger seat, and the skunk crawled in and, and her, looked, she didn't notice. She didn't notice, out, yeah. and so she just took out the other right. bit. Yeah. I obviously turned my my head a little bit on yeah. that scene because it didn't it didn't quite <laughs> click in my brain. I do have to say, in both movies, I want Cruella Deville's car because that's basically an all terrain vehicle. She, <laughs> that it really does go through a lot of stuff. Yeah, I love it in the animated one where she tells the henchman and drive carefully because there are police everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and the way she drives. Oh my god, <laughs> she's a lunatic. That was one thing I I kind of missed from the remake was that car chase scene yeah like just the craziness of it like because it was it was insane and i actually for some reason as i was watching it i'm like as it was over i'm like where was the car chase scene and i think that actually does happen in the in the sequel 102 dalmatians okay i think that they kind of bring that car chase scene you know, because for some reason in the back of my mind i know i've seen a live action version of the 101's yeah. animated I wish we'd have spent a little bit more money and extended the nose on that car. Because as much as I liked the car, it it just didn't quite feel right. It didn't have that. Yeah, you needed it a little bit longer, but it's sort of exaggeration. Well, I mean, they've made Batmobiles from scratch, so it's not 
it might not be super drivable, but you know, the Batmobile wasn't for the most part either. <laughs> and just have a cro- have a bit of a crossover. She's at an intersection, and then Dom from Fast and the Furious <laughs> and revs his engine. <laughs> Somebody edited me that together. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Oh, I love where we go with some of these podcasts. It's <laughs> awesome. so much fun. <laughs> yeah, why has Disney not done a Wacky Racers kind of thing? Oh, it would be great. <laughs> well, they haven't in recent memory. They they did a few in the in, in the late mid to late seventies, if I remember correctly. I mean, the Herbie movies and do it with Mario Kart kind yeah. of game. Yeah, with their Disney car. Oh, nice. Yeah. She'd be perfect for that. She comes with her own vehicle. So. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then you've got her, Herbie and. There's some other car. Yeah. I know there's other like iconic cars in some of these. Sure. Movies. Well, and then uh, you got the Model T that Mickey drives from yeah. back in oh, Steamboat sure. Willie. So there's lots they could do there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of. There's there's got to be like a few more. I'm thinking of like this weird jalopy that I've seen in a couple of cartoons. I think too. Goofy had one. Yeah, Goofy had Goofy one. Had one, I and mean, then oh, there's the. You can take the one because she she left the one she left the fox. In the middle of nowhere, and the fox and the hound, whatever that person was driving. Hey, um, I didn't catch it, but I was reading. There are a lot of dog cameos in the animated from some of their other films. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think Fox and the Hound was after this, but yes, it was, it yeah. was way after yeah. this. But Lady and the, the Tramp, Tramp. Yep. Were, were in there. They were in the window of the pet store. Yeah, and some of the other dogs from that movie were also in there as well. Yeah, I think the bulldog. Yeah, he was in the pet store, yeah. And I think the Lady and the Tramp were in there briefly during the Twilight bark. Nice. But I didn't catch it. I had to read about it. So a lot of a lot of little nods in there, which are in there. Um, you got to be really quick to see, I guess. And, and with, mm-hmm. you know, as an adult, I'm not catching it. I'm not yeah. making those connections because I haven't seen those movies since I was a mm-hmm. kid. Well, in some, some cases, like there's some there that, there's some there that, I, that I still haven't seen because I was at the Disney watching age, like that key Disney watching age when they were either in the theaters right. or on video. By the time home video came around, I was too old to want to go back and see all these great Disney films that I hadn't seen yet. Yeah. Right. Like the rescuers, oh, lady sure. and the tramp, this 101 Dalmatians. I, like, this was actually my first time seeing it in its entirety right. because it was, I was in that generation that didn't get to see them when they're in the theaters or, on VHS. Right. Yeah. When they're in those big uh, jewel cases. Yeah. I remember those. Mm-hmm. There, You could always tell that's what the one part of the shelf were, that were Disney movies. They were giant. Yes, yeah. yes. They they always had the supersized packaging. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, there was uh, something to make them distinctive and uh, to a certain extent collectible because they are, they are still collectible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, those uh, limited time releases yeah. too. It's yeah. that Disney continues to do the timed releases and what it's like once a decade. Well, I remember thing. those ads. They're like, we're opening the Disney vault. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, we're re- releasing this for a limited time. Yeah. 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 And, when, and once all the copies are gone, it's gone. Yeah. You know, for another 10 years or whatever it was that they sort of designated as their release periods. But yeah, that's how I actually saw most of these were video releases. Yeah. Because. You know, for the most part, my movie going time was in in the eighties. So, mm-hmm. and even then, the those movies are so short, I couldn't justify it. I'd rather go to a longer science fiction movie or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something a little bit that you're like, we're paying this much money. I think mainly well because my parents they wanted to watch something they can enjoy too. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So I never actually got to go to cartoons in the theater. So yeah. there's a lot of like that CBC World of Disney. That's where I saw a lot of it yeah. before the home video stuff kicked in. Yeah, but a lot of these iconic ones that they that sort of do come out of the vault, they didn't air. Like they're big animated feature films. Like you were lucky if you got one a year on the Wonderful World of Disney. At, yeah. least, at least during my yeah, all the really mm-hmm. hard ones to get your hands on because they never aired it on World the World of Disney. And geez, I think it only had maybe one or two home video releases between vhs i don't even know if it's been on dvd or blu-ray is black cauldron yeah yeah and i saw that in the theater that one i did see in the theater um (laughs) yeah and that one that one like that's sort of because of that it sort of got this semi-cult status because people love it but it's just not yeah well it's not one of their better ones and it certainly was a huge it was actually a pretty big bomb but actually it's probably had more releases than that roseanne bar one that pretty much killed the animation division 
Is that a whole farm? That? I don't I don't even remember the name of it, so sorry. <laughs> so anybody listening, if you can remember, let what, us know. What was yeah. essentially it about? Like it I didn't just... see it. So oh, okay. I, but I know she that was in it, and it was Barnyard Animals or some sort, but oh. that was a huge flop, and that pretty much killed. And hopefully I got that right, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a Disney thing. And then that's when they moved into full CG for yeah. quite some time. Yeah. Something with cows? No. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, after Mulan, I kind of, and The Lion King was kind of the last where I was like really aware of what was going on with Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's around the time when they started to see more of that computer generated rather than cell yeah. animation right? yeah so. yeah once once they moved into the 90s that's i think the 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 style that we have here in 101 that begins in 101 dalmatians goes for next uh, roughly 20 years or so yeah. into the 80s mm-hmm. uh until uh cg enhancements start kicking in so i imagine uh, little mermaid probably was the first one to move it into something else yeah style wise yeah, because it was. Yeah, it definitely has a different feel than this yeah. movie. Yeah, because yeah, you, at that point you can still quickly make your backgrounds. Uh, either that, or they moved back into the fully painted uh, backgrounds until the CG kicked in. By the nineties, you mm-hmm. had those intricate computer-generated backgrounds in Beauty and the Beast and stuff. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah. When they're yeah, and they, they then they had all the backers. They could reuse them for their their straight to DVD releases that we were doing. Yeah, the well, time. now the CG's gone so far. We're like, well, let's just do live action versions of our animated films with a whole bunch of CG. So essentially, it, it's still an animated film with a couple of people in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a little baffled by it, and that's why I kind of wanted to do this one because it was still before. Still and and CG was too expensive, so they were. And, and I was really charmed by things like Homeward Bound and whatnot. Oh, and, Milo and Otis. Yeah, Milo and Otis, and there's there's something about that. And if you can get an animal to emote, <laughs> was was Benji Disney? I don't think so. You know what? I don't know. I think maybe maybe it was. Now that I'm thinking about it, because Benji had quite a few adventures. I don't I know. I, I mean, Disney. that was maybe ABC. Well, yeah, it might have been Disney. There I don't a whole know. Series of them. There was it. more than one. TV. Oh yeah, there yeah. was TV series and a bunch of slew of TV movies. And Benji was a big deal at the time. This tiny little ankle biter yeah. got into adventures. Yeah, and no, the Shaggy Dog was definitely Disney. Shaggy DA. Yeah. Yeah, Shaggy DA. Yeah. Shaggy DA. Oh, I love the Shaggy DA. Yeah, that was so good. The Shaggy a, lawyer, dog. a lawyer that turns into a Shaggy Dog. <laughs> yeah. And then we had our own Canadian it's insanity. It, like you think about it, that's insanity. It's great. <laughs> but like it's 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 the ultimate like best werewolf scenario. <laughs> right. You're not really out of control werewolf. You're a nice shaggy dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> it, yeah, it's fine. I they, what they had two or three, and I think they made remade it. They did remake it. Yes, oh, with no, Tim well, Allen. That's right. And we might get cover that on the show at some point. <laughs> yep. As long as the Tim Allen version wasn't direct to television. Yes, if yeah. it violates the no, TV no, rule. No, no, I think it was actually a release. <laughs> I'm almost positive. But we'll we'll check on that. It'll be and fine. Herbie and well, we'll cover some more Disney down the road. Yeah, there's we, quite we a, haven't there's done quite a, a lot of those and yeah. we were we got into a fairly sci-fi horror thing there during our anniversary, so we're going to bring some fun stuff for yeah. the next little bit just to change change the tone a little bit, lighten things up. Some mad capillarity. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have some fun. Yeah, no, and then then we had our own Canadian version of like the dog that got into adventures. Oh, Littlest Hobo. Yeah, Littlest Hobo. Best episode of Cornered Gas ever. Oh, completely loved uh, it. Sorry, never seen it. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about Nanny for for one mm. second because okay. we, t- we talked about Joan Paul right now. She looks like she smells like bread, and you want to hire her. But my question <laughs> is, how the fuck could they afford her after after she lost her job and he had no income? That's what I couldn't figure out. Well, I assume she was on maternity leave, but I guess she hadn't had her kid no, yet. No, because so. she got fired by Because Cruella. she got married. Not because she got married, because she refused to give up the puppies. Oh, yeah. yes. But by that point. Oh, I guess the nanny would, was still there at that point. Yeah. Oh, that's, Sorry. Just a loophole. And here's but the But that's other not thing something too. kids are supposed to notice. Yeah. <laughs> and it, what, what I always kind of boggled me about the two movies is in, in the original, in the cartoon, they don't have any children. In the remake, they have not yet had a child, and they have a nanny? <laughs> uh, you know what? I bet you this nanny was Anita's nanny from when she was a kid. Mm, maybe that's why and, she's still there. And then. I think she's got money. I think Anita's got money. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's yeah. the only reason. They do hint at that in the 
the animated but, films. I do well. too. That's right. But yeah. what's amazing when we we look at this the old movie, they talk about like their little house in London. I'm like, they've got a house in London, and Cruella is like mocking them for this. I'm like, going, mm-hmm. it's a house in London. It's an expensive house. Yeah. And then this other movie, they're in a pl- they they can afford a place in London. They must have some sort of money. Yeah. No, I think m- most of it's probably Anita, and it's probably Roger that makes them live a little more modestly. Because he doesn't have money. Yeah. No, because like she she has a pretty it's, sizable apartment. Yeah. At, the beginning at of least the film. as a fashion designer in the remake, you know, you especially one that they've established is sought after. I don't think she was hurting. No. But I don't even know what she did in the in the she, animated she, film. She, they didn't really. Say no, they she was an artist of some sort. Which I thought was really weird. In the original one, they have the kind of odd-looking artist chick and her Afghan hound at the beginning. And I'm like going... And then uh, Pongo... All the animals that look like... Their owners that look like the animals. And then Pongo just kind of goes, oh, no. And I'm like going, no, wait, wait a second. She's an artist and he's a composer. It seems kind of like a match to me. I love when he sees like the poodle and the rich lady and he's like, ooh, oh, wait... Out of Too his fancy. league. Out of his league. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get real here. <laughs> but I love how he says he doesn't know, he can't determine human attractiveness, so he has to go by the dog. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really, really well done as far as the, the, the way that he chooses the potential mate for Roger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's sort of funny. You, we we mock the thing where like people look like their dogs, but have you ever been outside and you've literally seen this thing happen? You look at somebody walking a dog, and you're like, "Yeah, that makes sense. This person looks like their dog." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a delight when you catch it. Yes, yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's like there's a glitch in the matrix, and you're the only one who's noticed. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Actually, my dog even looks a little bit like me because she's getting the gray chin and stuff just like I have, right? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll yeah. go with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fess up and say I look like my dog. Um. <laughs> I think it just happens. I, and I have to say, growing up as a kid, I probably looked like a couple of our dogs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never owned the dog per se. So all the, all the dogs that came up in my family were my mom's dogs. So. Mm. And I'm she not- liked... Tiny, small dogs, uh, poodles, and my mom is a tiny, tiny person. Yeah, she's a tiny person with curly hair. With curly right. hair, yeah. She liked her perm. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. I'm so glad my mom doesn't listen to my podcast. <laughs> she doesn't, just trying to explain what a podcast is to her. <laughs> if she starts, have her start after this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not making fun of her. We're just making an observation. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I love Jay's mom. But I, I love my mom, To too. me, it's like a beautiful thing. Like, you're that close to your dog. You're like, this is my, this is my canine soulmate because we have so much in common. That's what I kind of like about it. That's what I think. Right. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and there we go. There we go. I guess we should probably address the whole Home Alone thing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Did I did write down Home Alone with animals? Yes, yeah. and it was, and but it was that was popular at the time. It, it that's was what appealed that to was kids, trendy. Right? At the it time. was trendy. Those it, movies were hugely successful. Yeah, and it gave them a way to address the outsmarting of of, of our our bad guys without dialogue. Mm-hmm. Right, and so mm-hmm. it, by by tricking them into into hurting themselves worked really well. Right, so it was it was it was a very good device for that. I thought, yeah. right? yes, I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing these guys get a little punished a little bit. I did too, but they were probably yeah. in my mind the the worst aspects of the but film. But then that's my follow up question. This is what I'm wondering: if we lived in a universe where there was no Home Alone, where it's a child doing this, and then you have these films where animals are doing this, do you think it would be such like a, a contrite like kind of device? Do you think it would have been more popular, less popular? Because you're like you're saying it does cause uh, the ability to kind of like narratively show that these animals are beating them without any dialogue um i think at least in this movie the animals are less intent on killing anybody <laughs> than that <Yeah>. child is <laughs> but to answer your question i think it would have been more successful if yeah. if, if we didn't have the pre-existence of the home alone Type movies, yes. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. I think it probably would have been a very different movie if Home Alone hadn't yeah. existed prior yeah. to it. 
There, yeah, and there might have been more movies kind of like this. Like there would have been more mm. kind of animal led movies because they would have just figured out this is the best way to drive. The given story given how much direction and they have the dogs to do, they could have just done a straight up adaptation of that animated mm. film, having them rolling in the soot and jumping in the back of a truck. They could have done all of that. It, it's actually none of that was unachievable. Yeah, in, in, as a live action, so they made a conscious choice to do something different there. Yeah. I would have liked to see them like just the little puppies, just like okay, getting all messy. Because yeah. I get you, they would have loved it. Oh, it would have been so cute. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a dirty puppy just being like, oh, I get to be dirty now. Yeah, because they—that's what dogs love to roll and stuff. Where you're like, oh God, why are you rolling in it? But they think it's delightful. <laughs> Yeah, yep. well, I was over at Sam's yesterday, and his dog was just rolling around in the grass. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she loves it. Yeah. Oh, and I have a question. How do you think Cruella got out from under that big pig? I don't know. But I, I'm guessing the pig just got tired of sitting on her. Yeah, because I'm like, wait, she, there's no way she could get up. That's no. a sow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're looking at probably 2,000 pounds worth of pig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Corella's hips should have been shattered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, screen junkies, we need to add that. <laughs> As to how she should have died. Yeah, somebody get a hold of that doctor and tell me what the injuries are. <laughs> oh, Broken actually, hip. <laughs> the only other thing I, I did want to bring up is I love the bit where she sees the tracks go into the, the sheep enclosure yes and she's like ah and then the dog's kind of giving her a little growl like yeah yeah bitch (laughs) and then the sheep get up and all the puppies are underneath and i'm like that was really clever and again that's something that they came up whole cloth that wasn't in the animated film and like they come up with these beautiful pieces for the the remake and they seem more cartoony than the cartoon did yes yeah and again, it's. I just think it's a. It was a beautiful way of showing that in the intelligence of the anim- these animals without mm. having voiceover or talking mm. animals. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the the talking animal film unless it's a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. the cartoon bit. I thought I just I can get into that. Yeah. yeah, I have a little tougher time having some internal voices on, on a, in a live action thing yeah. but as a cartoon it's not a problem and they did a great job in giving these animals personalities in this movie without giving them an internal dialogue because you, you're not going to be able to have them talk and mesh up the the sounds yeah. uh, at least not 96 and i mean you could just cgi the whole thing now well, but. Yeah. i guess what they used to do is it would just be sort of they'd have the animal kind of standing there and yeah, then- have them chew pee better well, no, but not even moving their mouth. It would be like they're talking. Yeah, like it was it'd just be an, internal monologue, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think they made the right call to not do any of that. Um, I do too. One thing I missed is, is is one thing that was a big change was when Lucky gets left behind, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because that was that they 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 changed that quite a bit because Lucky did get left behind because he was watching TV. Yeah, but they went back and got him. He right? was just fall, fell asleep and missed the escape. Yes, right. Um, yeah. And it, it, and that, that's where they kind of added in something extra for Skinner to do, I guess. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and to show how lucky Lucky really is. Yeah. Oh, I know, because that's harrowing yeah. to watch this poor dog and you're like, oh my God, you think it's all going to go terribly bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know it's not. As an adult, you know that it's not. But as a child, I could see that being like quite frightening right is, is mm-hmm. oh no lucky right what's gonna happen to lucky right especially when you see skinner walk in the door and yeah. and, and the, the abject look of terror of lucky's face yeah. right? i mean and it was he, he did look terrified mm-hmm. that, that dog was really good at looking scared apparently when in the in the remake when corella deville when the dogs first saw glenn close there was one dog and i think it was the one that did the rescue stuff yeah actually cringed and backed away from her oh my god <laughs> so that crazy hair and i'm like excellent you the dogs are already afraid of corolla deville yeah. in real life that is amazing that is amazing <laughs> that says a lot to acting it yeah. really does yeah so so whatever was going on there uh, maybe she's method i don't even want to know how she got method on that <laughs> yeah no <laughs> let's not delve too th- too no. deep into that. I don't think I don't think Glenn Close has that in her at all. No. no. But I think she could channel that like she channeled a lot of evil. I think she could channel that evilness and then a puppy would be like, There's something very wrong with that person. This is toning it down. She boiled a rabbit in fatal attraction, so this is just a step back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. 
More animals made it out of this film yes. than <laughs> Fatal Attraction. Yeah, so right. yeah, this was a step back, so I have nothing to worry about here. <laughs> nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. That's right. Um, <laughs> but I, I have to say, at the end, when like Horace and Jasper, when they were like, the cops come, they're like, huh, we're rescued. <laughs> and then they get put in the back of the police van, they're like, ah, so much better now. <laughs> we're warm. <laughs> There's no animals here. <laughs> I liked how he froze for a moment there. That was awesome. Yeah, there wow. was. Yeah. That creeped me out. That was so weird. I'm like, well, he's dead. <laughs> My adult brain was going, he's dead. Yeah. 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 And I mean, realistically, he probably would have been. Yeah. Yeah, again, back to the Screen yeah. Junkies thing because, yeah, it was a long fall, freezing cold water. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, he would have to get inside pretty fast before he started getting hypothermic. Yeah. Although, if you go back to the cartoon where Pongo and uh, Perdita are going into that very icy river and they're swimming across and then it sort of cuts away, they apparently don't go across. But I'm like going, two Dalmatians and like sub freezing water going along there, they they might be very ill dogs at yes. the end of that. Oh, and yeah. you can they don't see have much how the cold was affecting them after their, the march after quite some time there yeah. in, in the cartoon. In some ways, that cartoon is way more realistic. Yes. <laughs> than the, than this uh, remake was yeah for sure yeah because yeah. yeah they would have been cold and their feet would have been cold and their yeah they would have been tired and hungry that all of those things and they they, yeah. they they addressed all of them which i thought was actually really wonderful yeah, yeah. with lucky's like i'm and, frozen my tail and frozen. fresh milk straight from the cow yeah <laughs> the little cows are like shh be quiet let them sleep <laughs> it's like I like the cows. Yeah, yeah they were good. Yeah. And I like that Very they had all league. those characters in there, and they you, you could kind of see those characters in, in, in the yeah. real-life animals. Like the, yeah, the barnyard was still there. You still had the cows, and you still had the horse. There's, and the horse still does the, the kicking, kick thing. The kick thing, so... You know, that's, okay. that's all kind of there. Another thing, getting kicked by Clydesdale. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's bad. Well, they didn't, they didn't actually get kicked directly by the Clydesdale. The Clydesdale hits the boards and the boards shoot up, right? Oh, no. She, and, she's going up to that that window at the beginning when she's just oh, coming right. up to and the barn. And he kicks the doors. Yeah, that's right. And he kicks the doors. So yeah. he slammed a lot of wood in Glenn Close's face. Oh, yeah. So that's bad. Yeah, she <laughs> wouldn't have a face after that, I don't think. No, it Clydesdale? Been, yeah, it would have spread out across between two ears. It just would have yeah. been a... Yeah. Oh, and then they did have, like, the shaggy dog kind of as the colonel. Mm -hmm. But what I really enjoyed about, like, the old animated one is the way they had his paws and, like, the physical... You could tell it was an elderly dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just in the animation, which I thought was really amazing. In well, 1961. Well, d yeah. uh, Disney was very famous about bringing in animals uh, for their artists to study when they were doing their designs. I mean... Some of this, I'm I'm imagining that a lot of this, uh, especially with the car scenes, were rotoscopes mm -hmm. of some sort. Well, especially I was when she goes down into the ravine. Yeah, I was That's reading I was. that they were filming and had painted these cars all white with the black outlines on the cars. And that's how they would animate over top of this, f something that they already shot. Yeah. I mean, man, it really pays off. Uh, yeah, really if, they, if, they, if they're doing kind of some their own version of rotoscoping, I mean, they were obviously the best at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, By for far. the longest time, Disney was the best at anything animation. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's bottom line. Is there was there were no studios doing what Disney was doing. Yeah. I don't think anybody would even argue with that now. Even mm -hmm. the fact that they're all CG now, but yeah. uh, I would love to see them go back and do a traditional animation. Every now and again, they'll do one and you'll get a surprise hit, like something like Lilo and Stitch mm -hmm. comes out of nowhere during a time where they pretty much abandoned animation and it was just good enough. I think it was probably intended for as a home release and it was just good. They thought it was good enough to release theatrically. Yeah. yeah. And then it just hit a note. People just really, really liked it. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we'll get to see it again. Hopefully, hopefully somebody at Disney's listening. Well, <laughs> yeah. it, with a lot of these movies, a lot of the stuff with the characters in their movies, is the voice actors, as they got to use more famous people, that person's sort of face became part of that character. Like oh, when you sure. think of the genie, you think of Hades and Hercules, you think of all these other people. Like even even yeah. way back when with the Evil Queen, they were using the person doing the voice as sort of a model to create yeah, what they were they, creating. Yeah, they were using, um, certainly their actors um, were inspirations for certain characters. I do believe Anita, uh, Lisa Davis was a model for several characters and I think mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty as well as Anita. And You can kind of 
see see those similarities just in the designs of those characters. So I think she she was the model of quite a few. But yeah, Disney does like to do that. So like you said, uh, James yeah. Woods there. Yeah, it was for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it's for sure the inspiration for Hades. Yeah. yeah, and even though she didn't do the voice, Alyssa Milano for Ariel. Yeah, yeah. Famously, she was the inspiration. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, I think that's great if you can put a, a real life face to it, and maybe that's why these things translate so well into live action is because you can already put a, an actual face to those characters, mm-hmm. which is pretty neat. Yeah, like that. When I look at Glenn Close and I look at think about anime of Cruel Deville, like sure, Cruel Deville has like those very sharp cheekbones, but I kind of see Glenn Close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they, she was she was excellent casting. And I mean, Jay and I were talking about Glenn Close and my inexplicable dislike for her. I don't for her and Michael Douglas, and I, I figured out it's Fatal Attraction is the common denominator. Ah, okay, something, there we go. something about Fatal Attraction just really got to me subconsciously and I cannot get past uh. it even though I know they're both fabulous actors mm-hmm. um, and I enjoy Ooh. movies that they're in and I enjoy them in the movies but I will not go out of my way to watch a movie with either of them in it who is that who is the who is the wife in Fatal Attraction is it Ann Archer I want to say it's Ann Archer but I'm probably wrong it's somebody else I don't recall I don't recall sorry because I'm like doing I just want to know if you feel the same way about that actress but I don't know I'd I have think to look those are the two standouts for Sam. That's why it's yeah. something yeah. ingrained in him. Yeah, and there and there are the two, there's very few actors that, that where I'm like, oh, I just don't want to see them. And there is those two are mm. probably uh, the very short list of actors. I, I just really can't get excited about. Yeah, seeing them. I, I can't really pinpoint yeah. it because I do have a similar thing with Glenn Close. But every time I see her, she's just yep. fantastic. So mm, and I, you're going, why do I? Why do I yeah. hate her? Yeah, every Actually, time. There's a list of three. Sigourney Weaver's another actress that I, where I don't know why I don't like her because she's phenomenal, but I don't like her. Yeah, I took time out of my Defenders binging to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Sigourney Weaver, and that's why I brought her up. Uh, <laughs> see, yeah, and I go out of my way for Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, and I don't know why I don't like her because like, I love the Alien films. I love her in everything I've ever seen her in. But I just, but just the thought of like going out of my way to see a movie with her in it just makes me just go, ah, oh, you know, I'm just not interested. I don't know. Everybody's got their favorites. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not like I dislike Glenn Close. It just, I don't know. I, it is one of those things I go out of my yeah, way to a few avoid. People. And then I'm like, why am I punishing myself? Because those movies are are always good. Like, yeah. What was the They're one usually good. where there's the two guys who got like the government contract? Like they did a movie about it. The government contract for, it was a guy from Whiplash and Jonah Hill. Mm-hmm. And that was the one movie where both of those leads, those are two guys that I'm in the same boat with that as like, I will, I don't go out of my way to watch any movies with them. Yeah. Right? So you, just, you take to certain actors and you, some you don't yeah. and that's okay. Everybody's yeah. got them. So yeah. yes, it's just weird because like I said, I, every time I see her on screen, I'm always in love with her performance. Yeah. See, I yeah. love a delightful surprise. Maybe that's part of it. I don't mind it if I'm not going out of the way, but when I'm happily surprised and I'm like, I'm really enjoying this performance. It's kind of a nice feeling. You're like, okay, I got past my own crap and I'm enjoying this. I think what actually with Glenn Close, I think it was The Shield that kind of turned me around on on my opinions of her. Cause, and, and maybe it was Fatal Attraction because I, I, her, her big square jaw, just uh. <laughs> there's something about it. And I'm like, why? Why did you? Well, is she sexy? I don't know. <laughs> she it, well, it's weird, and she isn't. In Fatal Attraction, like I kind, I kind of get it because yeah. watching that movie, their their two characters are terrible, terrible people. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that's maybe what it is. It, you they're believe so in good her, how at, how horrible she is that that's all that's in your brain. That, you've got used to hating and, her, yeah. and, it's, <laughs> and that might be it for for yeah. And yeah. it's also because it can be so based in a realistic scenario mm-hmm. that this could happen, and these people could be like that. You can't help but get past, like you can't help but associate that mm-hmm. with that yeah. actor. And yeah, and I, I, I mean, because I Michael Douglas says, I mean, because we're talking since we're talking about it. I mean, I love Romancing Stone. I love, I love that. Jewel and Isle. I love that really black comedy. Oh, Lord of the Roses. Roses. Mm-hmm. Love that movie. I love the game. I love. I love falling down. So Black Rain. Black Rain. Yeah. So why do I cringe every time I, I somebody says, says it's a Michael Douglas movie? I don't know. It has to be Fatal Attraction because because they were so mm-hmm. unlikable both of them in that movie that I just mm-hmm. never got over it. Yeah, maybe it's just it's that's the weird thing. You can some maybe that's the thing. You get to an actor, they've done such an absolutely amazing performance. You forever associate with them with an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure that's it actually. 
<laughs> well, psychology and a fun comparison. Um, <laughs> there, we there, there we go. We got we got deep with 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see us do another cartoon to live action remake, let us know yeah. what your favorites are. You can do that through all our social media or our email. We're on Twitter, at Invasion Remake. We're on our Facebook. Uh, go like our page on Facebook. It is Invasion of the Remake, of course. And Invasion of the Remake at gmail.com. You can send us those messages there as well. Ooh, could I do not like so much where they fan challenge us? Can I challenge the fans for something that sure. I think might be interesting? Can they think of one where they can reverse the process? Which live action movie do you think you could take, make it animated, and improve it? Yeah, we might actually do that on the show if you got a good idea and you want us to do the reverse. I would really enjoy that. That would be a lot of fun. Or take a, I mean, take a cartoon that you'd like to see us remake as live action. Yeah. Because right? yeah. we, we we've never done that either. No, we haven't. So if you got some ideas, again, those those places, uh, at Invasion Remake on Twitter, Invasion the Remake on Facebook, mm-hmm. and Invasion the Remake at gmail.com, let us know. I like that idea. That is a great idea, Trish. Yeah, exactly. And Sam. So fun. <laughs> Yeah. I, I want to hear their ideas cuz and I would really like to do that. So. Yeah, I'd like to do both of them. I think it would be a great idea. I, I mean I, I think Trish's idea is better than mine, but Oh no. I think wanna... they're both they're fabulous. Both good. Both fabulous. <laughs> this will this will be fun. And yeah. it's just like I I I'm sure that they've like our whole audience between us and them, they've seen like such a myriad of films. There, there's got to be mm-hmm. something that we haven't seen that would be brilliant to do either of these things too. I think you're right. Or even that we have seen that we just never really th- thought of as, as, a, as a cartoon cool idea i'm on board for sure yeah. you can also help us uh, help out the show tell your friends about the show tell them how to find the show we're in a myriad of places we're at apple podcast itunes google play music stitcher player fm tune in radio blueberry and spreaker we're also on freaking youtube freaking youtube <laughs> freaking YouTube. youtube so tell all your friends where to find us and help us get more Earballs on the show. <laughs> it's back. It's all coming back. It's all coming back. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe that should be the animated short that we should make. Earballs. Earballs. The short. <laughs> totally fun. I would. I would love to see that. <laughs> you can also help us out by giving us a rating or a short review. You can do that on iTunes or the other places. Give us a five-star rating and a short review and just tell other people about the show. And it helps them be informed to see if that's something they might like. And hopefully they do. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, and if and they so, get on and like us and give us yeah. more ideas. Yes. Yes, absolutely. We can use those. Yeah, and of course, we uh, leave your comments on social media. Even if you just want to get into the conversation uh, and continue the conversation about these movies, you can leave those comments in all those social media places, and we'll engage you because, you know, we we like to do that. Yeah, and we love hearing about stuff that maybe we we did we missed. Or oh yeah, we didn't know about a movie. Yeah, we can we can only cover so much, especially when we're talking about multiple movies in an episode, and we're not going to cover every point. So if there's other points you want to talk about, uh, we will engage you about that on our social media. Yeah. Happily. Uh, absolutely. Happily. <laughs> we dug deep on this one psychologically, so maybe we might have missed some more Dalmatian related stuff. <laughs> That's right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's we there's so much more in, in these movies and, and every movie we cover we can keep going on, but you know, there's only so much time to pod. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and the pod should never be longer than the movies themselves. <laughs> No, but sometimes it happens. It does happen. <laughs> <laughs> it does, does happen. And I'm, yeah, I was very happy to do a Disney movie this week. We're going to mm-hmm. keep the fun rolling next week. It won't be Disney, Yay. but it will be fun. So excited. Yeah, it should, it should be an interesting one. I'm, uh, it's it's going to be a challenge, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> a delightful challenge. <laughs> You know what's funny, though? I have to say this, because when you told us about this, Jay, you immediately followed up with, but it's not on Netflix anymore. You're you making it very hard for those of us who don't own the DVD copy that you have to watch <laughs> yeah. this. Well, <laughs> go downtown. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll it's find not, something. It's we'll not there. expensive. No. But I just thought, I thought it was funny that, that you're like, yeah, we're doing this next week. By the way, it's not on Netflix anymore. <laughs> oh, well, it was. And that's why I, ch- I did check it last night. But yeah. I'm like, screw it. We're still doing it. <laughs> 
to be fair, he did use the word challenge. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, it's it's you can find it on iTunes. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's it was had a, it's a foreign film with a it's wide. It's got to be somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So that that's the only hint I'm giving you guys. <laughs> Until so. the teaser goes out a couple of days before the air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'll hear, you'll see the teaser a couple of days, and you might get it. You might not. I don't know. But until then, I've been Jason. I'm always Sam. I will continue to be Trish. And I'm going to go find some uh, Dalmatians to pet. They're beautiful we'll animals. Cuddle them. That's right. <laughs> All right. Aww. We are out of here. them to the other puppies we've already stolen and i have my cozy puppy coat (laughs) i'll be wearing anita's dogs